to me, Andy, and we were talking about um, EQs and, and, you know, using mixers to enhance audio and stuff like that. So um, do you want to cover the mixer thing again or, or will we move on from that? Yeah, no, let's cover it again because anybody listening to the report a later day. Right, okay, okay, right. So basically, um, a lot of guys will end up using um, a mixer for enhancing the receive audio because as, you know, you get older, your hearing diminishes. So you can't hear those higher frequencies that you could hear when you were, you know, 30, 35, 40, etc. So one good way of combating that is to get yourself a little mixer either the Behringer 502 or the Behringer 802. Uh, you can buy those quite cheap on Amazon, brand new for, I think the 502 is around 28 pounds. And I think the 802 is somewhere around 35, something like that. And um, when that arrives, um, all you need to do is make a lead to go from your uh, external speaker output on the back of your radio goes to the uh, input of the mixer which will be the uh, TRS type plug under the first um, XLR socket that you see and um, you and when you look down along the knobs on that row you'll see one that says pan so you turn that fully to the left so that's like your balance left and right channel um, so turn your receive audio to the left reason being that if you come along after and you want to run your transmit audio through the mixer as well. Um, if you don't have them panned when, you know, it'll just cause feedback when you stomp on the pedal and, and stuff like that. So uh, the best rule of practice is to have left the left channel for your receive audio and the right channel for your transmit audio. So once you have that done, you come out of the main mix output um on, on the uh, on the mixer and you head on for your speakers, two four ohm speakers wired in series, um, because as most uh, of us know, uh, most of the external speaker sockets or whatever are configured in the radio to, to work uh, properly on an eight ohm load. So you can either use one of the big old eight ohm speakers if you've got one, um, or just alternatively use two four ohm speakers in series the likes of the little square um, home theater uh, speakers that you'll find on Amazon. You'll buy a pair of them there for less than 20 quid. I have them here. Stuck a pair of Bose speakers on them. They look lovely. And um, so you get your speakers hooked up then. So you have the three knobs then. You'll see low, mid, and high. So you can play around with the three of those so you can boost uh, you can boost. It's normally, you know, for someone that's older and they're struggling to hear stuff, um, it's always going to be the high range that they're struggling with. So you can boost that by up to 15 dB and you can play around with the mid and the low as well. So if you spend long enough playing around with it, you'll end up with a situation that, you know, you're, you're quite, you know, you're quite comfortable to sit there and listen to it and you'll be able to hear stuff that you can't hear without using a mixer so um that's pretty much running the receive audio through it running the transmit audio through the mixer it, it is a lot more a lot more involved um because whereas with the receive audio all you have to make is the lead that goes from the radio to the speaker and then from the uh, from the radio to the mixer and then from the mixer to the speakers when you start introducing a microphone into the mix and you're using di boxes to isolate things it gets a lot more it gets a lot more complicated real fast after that but uh there is a show of hands around the room who has an icon 7300 three anybody else no no all right four five okay there's a little piece of kit there um on ebay um, if you put in you uniform Romeo six Quebec whiskey, he makes a 10 band uh, EQ version seven for the icon 7300. It's a little black box. It's got a little TFT touch screen on it. 
And yeah, this thing is absolutely amazing. I was watching a video on uh, YouTube about it today. He used to make the previous one that had was the little black box with all the knobs on it. And quite a few people were running those in the 7300 and they absolutely loved them. But this one is absolutely a thousand times better because you can do an awful lot more stuff. Now, I don't think the EQ on it is fully parametric, but it's good enough. Um, he, he done a demonstration on the video where he was running the audio through it. And the nice thing I liked about it was on the back of the box, there's an XLR input there. So you can plug a, a dynamic into it straight away, or you can plug in a condenser into it straight away. And once you just have, you can get like the little inline block that will give you phantom power for a condenser microphone. Uh, so you'd plug that in between the microphone and this little box of tricks. But it's it's absolutely very well made. Uh, it's got a monitor port on it. You can adjust everything on it. You can adjust absolutely, you know, monitor level. You can do uh, the EQ. You can see there's like a VU meter on it. It's, it's so simple, so easy to use, so easy to configure because a lot of people... All they want is to be able to run a microphone on a boom and get nice audio out of it. And, you know, like you, you, all the stuff I have. Yeah. OK, it's lovely. But it's it's like the law of diminishing returns. You have to spend vast amounts of money for very, very small gains. Um, this thing with a BM800 microphone was what I'm using here on this computer. Uh, BM800 microphone, brand new on eBay. 12 quid maybe uh 16 quid you can buy the whole kit where you get the you get the boom and the pop filter and the microphone you get everything so now this thing is about a hundred and about 160 quid delivered from the ukraine and um this guy has sold tons of these things he's kosher uh, Sergey is his name. Have a look at him there on on uh, on Facebook or not Facebook on QRZ and have a look at some of the videos there on YouTube of him demonstrating this thing. Now his English is brutal, but it's a lot of it's a lot better than my Russian. So um, he he does a fairly decent job of demonstrating it there. And when you see it, like everything on the screen is in English. Everything is printed on the box in English. And it's very, 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 very well made. Like so much bang for your book there. You plug it in, plug it into the radio, spend 10 minutes playing with it. And that's it. Job done. Good to go. Away with you. And you, you can even have a, two different profiles. So if you want to sound real nasally and narrow for 20 meters, you, you, you can do that. And you just have that profile saved, whereas then you have your regular settings for talking to the boys on 80 and 40. So it's absolutely very impressive piece of kit now for the money. Um, I, I, I think that was very good. So if I was starting off or wanted to have something decent there to, you know, like doing it through the EQ that they put in the radio, it's it's very basic. Um, it's not parametric at all. You just have setting one to five or whatever it is. And, you know, one, two, three, four, and five is what some engineer sitting in a lab somewhere determines as, yeah, well, that'll do these four or five situations. But, you know, as we all know, everybody is unique. Everybody's voice is different. The shape of your teeth. There's so many factors that you know, determine how your voice sounds. Um, you know, e e believe it or not, even the, the, the length of your neck, because some people have a long neck, short neck. My wife always says I have no neck, but um, some people say I have one like a jockey's what's it, but however, um, you know, like to get the level of adjustability out of any radio, even a 10,000 pound top of the line, all singing, all dancing, makes you tea in the morning radio. Um, you're not going to have the level of adjustability that something like this is going to give you. And for, for that money, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So I'm rambling again. So uh, 
that's 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 what I would really recommend anybody. Um, one of the other things I get the most amount of emails about from people: How do I make this lead to make this microphone or this mixer or this DI box or this whatever work with my radio? Okay. Um, so I'll email them back, okay, you have to make the first part of it has to be unbalanced and then it has to be balanced here. And then when you come out of that, you have to unbalance it again and blah, blah, blah. And I get an email back. What does unbalance mean? Okay, so the biggest thing with, with all this audio stuff is people will sit there, they'll hear guys talking away on the bands and they go, oh, yeah. He sounds absolutely fantastic, you know. So they have a look at his QRZ page or they start looking into websites about audio and stuff like that. And they say, all right, yeah, if I get this, this, this and this, I'll sound like him. OK, it's not that simple. Um, you have to get the this, this, this and this, but then you have to interface it all together and, and then interface it to your radio. So there's a document by the Rain Company, R-A-N-E. Uh, if you Google, uh, hold on, I have it here on one of the other bands or other tabs, sorry. Uh, it's the Rain Sound System Interconnection. So if you Google that, it'll bring you to the document. This document was written in 1985 and it's still the Bible. Um, it shows you how to prevent ground loops, how to interface balance to unbalance. It, it explains that and there's a very good visual part of this document that shows you how to interface a balanced XLR to an unbalanced RCA. An RCA unbalanced to a fully balanced XLR or three quarter inch or 3.5 mil, whatever. It shows you there it shows you what cables to connect where which ones to leave floating which ones to leave unconnected blah 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 and um, shows you how ground lift switches work to re get rid of home and stuff like that uh, explains the difference between chassis ground and and uh, system ground and stuff like that so once you kind of wrap your head around all that kind of stuff um and you see it there in front of you when you're scrolling down through this document, like it's quite involved. I forget how many pages is in it, but there's a good few in it. And it shows you how to how to do everything. And it explains about isolation transformers. And, you know, now, to be honest, isolation transformers, I don't know. You'll have people telling you, yeah, you should have a Jensen transformer between every stage in the audio chain. Um, no, I don't. And uh, I have no problems. You know, you'll have people saying, oh, you'll have this and you'll have that. And you'll have RFI and you'll have home. And no, you won't. Um, all I have in terms of that is I use a DI box, which is its intended use is for connecting a unbalanced signal from a guitar, a bass guitar or a keyboard uh, to bring that into a mixing console. Right. So they use a DI box and by the nature of what it does, it, it, uh, it converts uh, an unbalanced signal to a balanced signal. But along with that, there are two transformers in it. There's a transformer on the input, there's a transformer on the output. So um, you're galvanically isolated. You're connected, but you're not. OK, so if any RF is being picked up anywhere in the audio chain, and like my chain is 20 odd meters long. So there's quite a big chance of that happening, especially when I have the Drake L7 fired up. Um, so if any RF is picked up anywhere along the line, it will get as far as the DI box and that's it. It won't get into the radio. It can't, which is not possible. So um, that's what I'm using that for. And it's very handy. 20 quid, 25 quid, something like that, brand new. Behringer make them as well. Simple enough to configure. I've made videos about it. And um, that's that. Cable uh, is another one I get emails about all the time. There's only one cable I use, whether it's for microphones, speakers, whatever. Um, I use a cable 
It's called um, Van Damme, like John Claude Van Damme. Uh, Van Damme Star Quad. Now, there's two versions of it. There's uh, the regular stuff, and then there's the mini. That's the one I want. Uh, that's the one I use. It's 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 primary design. This stuff is for, you know, and have like a big concert, like the Rolling Stones are playing in Wembley or somewhere like that. And the guy is doing front house sound and he's halfway down in the crowd. So all the cables run from the stage down to him and back up again. And uh, all those cables are, are made from Van Damme Mini Star Quad. It's tour grade. So it's designed to reject uh, any RFI or EMC, anything like that. Um, you have four conductors, two pair that are twisted and it's shielded as well. So, you know, if you're using it for, for uh, your microphone, you have your two pair uh, audio plus, audio minus, and then you have your ground. So it's the only cable to use because a lot of these microphones that people buy, like the BM800, and um, any of those cheaper microphones that you get on eBay, the microphones are fantastic, but the cable that they give you with it, the only place for it is the bin. Because if you if you cut the plug off or just even strip off some of the jacket, there's not even there's not even twenty percent uh, shielding with the braid. It's absolutely the poorest quality cable on the planet. So um, I can't stress enough how uh, how important good cable is, even good plugs. You know, yeah, you, you can go on there and buy XLR plugs on. Uh, on eBay for, for a pound a piece, or, you know, you get 10 of them for eight quid or something like that, but you can, but you're going to have trouble with them. Um, you know, I'll only buy the Neutron, uh, Neutric plugs. They're about six or seven quid a piece. And, but you never have any trouble with them. You know, they, they fit properly. The pins are the right size or, in the case of a female one, the, the receiving sockets are the perfect size. You know, like I've seen guys coming with cheap XLR plugs to me and I won't use them. And they say, well, why? Well, sure, what's the difference? And I'll show them. I'll show them. It won't plug in. It won't It won't lock close. It won't fit. It won't fit into the to the socket. The diameter is too big. So, you know, I always buy decent plugs as well. Um, You know, some people, they just... It's it's just something you can't do on the cheap, you know. You have to you have to do it the right way to to get the proper results, I suppose. And um, you know, like the amount, I probably get out 30, 40 emails a week asking me about audio, asking me how to connect things and how to how to make cables and you know it's you know when you start off with it where you're doing something simple or you're just running your receive audio through through something to, to, to make it uh, a little bit easier for you to hear, you know, that's, that's simple enough. Like most, most amateurs will be able to figure that out without, you know, they, they, they'll figure it out. Like it's, there's nothing complicated to it. We've all added extra speakers to our radios externally down through the years and stuff like that. So it's, it's no different than like that, but um, when you kind of get past that stage to, um you know, where you have vast amounts of interconnection and stuff like that. It can get a little complicated, but again, as I say, back to your man, our friend in the Ukraine there, why stress yourself? This That's why my hair is white. I'm 46 and I have a white head of hair from playing with audio gear over there. That's, that's what happened to me. And uh, I call it the slippery slope. So be careful if you get on it because... Uh, <laughs> It's very hard to get off. Um, you know, when, when you, most people say, to you, oh, yeah, sure, when you have it all connected up, you're, 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 you know, you're golden and you're good to go. And I, I always laugh. And uh, they say to me, why? What are you laughing at? I said, well, that's, that's the first part. I said, now you got to figure out all the settings. Uh, what way you have to have your EQ set up and what frequencies you got to expand and contract on the parametric eq which ones you boost which ones you cut blah 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 i think uh to get to the stage where i was happy with my eq 
to where it's been for the last three or four years. Uh, I think I spent 18 months playing with it. 18 months. How does it sound now? You know, like those guys on the Malibu ad, the, 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 all the Jamaican guys, uh, can you hear me now? You know, any change? What does it sound like? I used to drive everyone I knew demented. And uh, I drove myself even more demented, but uh, it's, it's all part of it. Um, for anybody as well that's interested in playing with audio, there's a website. Uh, let me just check this now because I always get this like guy's call sign wrong. Could and you paste it in the chat, George? You are? Could you paste the URL into the chat? When oh, you yes. Yes, uh, I you. will do that now as soon as I find them. Uh, ESSB. I can actually put a few bits in the chat there that I've been talking about now. Especially this, the equipment. That would be very useful. Yeah. This site that I'm going to put the link in the chat of here, uh, most 90% of what I've learned about uh, ham radio audio came from that website there. This is our EQ from our friend Sergey. And this is the rain document I was talking about. This is the Bible. You learn so much from that. Uh, brilliant document. The, the guy who wrote that, he needs to get a Pulitzer Prize because it's so well written. It's so well explained. You'd be absolutely clueless picking up this document. And by the time you get to the end of it, you'll have half an idea of what you're supposed to be doing. And if you have half an idea of what you're supposed to be doing, it's better than no idea. So uh, that's them three there. Um, yeah, so um, other than that, the cable, I'll find that for you. And I, um, I will, if somebody wants to start yammering away there for a couple of minutes, and I will find a few bits on uh, eBay here and drop them into the chat. Because as good as I am at talking, I can't do it and type at the same time. While you're typing, I'm just going to say I'm I'm absolutely fascinated so far, and <laughs> and the other thing that gets me, George, is the fact that some morning you must have woken up and said, "I'm going to improve my audio." Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go hunting. Yeah, it must have taken a while to find these guys, and then to satisfy yourself that they were the right guys, not just another load of tats that you could have got from somewhere else so you say 18 months to get the audio right for you mm. but it's probably taking you several years just to get all the equipment right well the, the 18 months that i referred to was how long it took me to get the eq settings right yeah that's what i mean <laughs> so um, the equipment before that must have taken even longer yeah, well, I, I started off with, with just basic stuff. I bought um, I bought the mixer first, and then I bought a preamp, and then I bought, um, I was using, um, oh, I can't even remember. I had a little, it was a little RS Realistic uh, five-band EQ. I had it from CB days. I was using that for an EQ for a long time. But it was, only, it was only graphic. It wasn't parametric. Um, so then I got the parametric, and that that changed the game immensely um, when when I got the parametric EQ. And, uh, yeah, gathering the gear. Like, the microphone I have there at the moment, no, I use a Shure SM7B. Um, I think I paid 350 euros for it. So whatever that is in pounds, it's probably around two, 290, maybe 300, something like that. And then I had to buy a specific preamp to drive it because it needs it needs 60 dB of gain. It's very gain hungry microphone. And that cost me, uh, well, I think that was another 180 euros or something like that. That's why I call it the slippery slope. Once you step on... Game over. Well, I've got one of them. I've got one of them, uh, uh, Sergey's eight band. 
and um, I've got the eight band equalizer. Mm. And lo lots of guys use them and they love them. Yeah, that worked extremely well. I found that once I got the settings right, as soon as there's a pile up and I call in on first shout, I'm in. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it works well. I'm yeah. We're going to look at the, uh, the 10 band one. Yeah, that new one I was, uh, I had heard about it, but um, I didn't go looking for the video until I, uh, earlier today because I knew it was going to be on here tonight. So I says, I'll, I'll have a look at this thing. Okay. And I was so impressed. I was so, so impressed. Uh, I'll get the, I dropped the link for his video here as well. Um, uh, so everyone can see it. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I will, um, who's that? Somebody dropping. Yeah, I'll, um, take care of that now, and I'm trying to find the cable here as well, so I just, uh, yammer away amongst yourselves there. Number six. George, interestingly, you were referring to, uh, the frequencies you can hear as you get older. Mm. Um, when way back in the oh, probably in the sixties, I was at an exhibition in in London, and the post office got this thing set up so you you could see how high a frequency you could hear. Me and my mate were both in our early twenties, and that time we could earn eight, about eighteen k. Mm. Um, and we, he was invited to write it down. On the list, there was a, a, a man of seventy who was down to about seven uh, k. Uh, and uh, a, a youngster of seven, and he could hear twenty-three. Yeah, so well, that's could... that's quite normal. Yeah. Um. Once you, once you, once, you, you, once yeah. you pass, I think it's once you pass forty-five, it 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 diminishes quite rapidly. You know, and by the time you get to your seventies, if if you can hear, you know, seven or eight k, that's that's pretty much it. You know. <laughs> um it's it's amazing but you know some people then like some people say oh your eyesight you know they'll, they'll, they'll say the same thing like i'm i'm 46 and i got my eyes tested last year i still have 2020 perfect so but i know guys that are younger than me um you know guys that work with me and and they maybe got their eyes tested this year or last year or whatever and you know their 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 vision is like 50 percent less than mine um so you know you can be lucky um you can be lucky oh chat where's my chat window then i found a link for the um for the cable yeah just bang it in there it's a it's a place in margate because i bought some recently yeah that's where i got it yeah uh, cheaper than buying it on um on bam, bam, <laughs> no it's cheaper than buying it even on ebay uh, buying it from that crowd in Margate, I got twenty or thirty meters of, of it the last time from them. Yeah. So it's uh, it's the only cable to use, and you can use it for your even the the same cable. You can use it for speakers. It won't pick up any RF or anything like that if you have it kind of strung around the place. It it's very very good, you know. the The idea of it being twisted is that um, if you send two signals down this cable of the same frequency and the same amplitude, right? The way it's twisted together in the whole lot, by the time the, the other end of the cable, if you have it on a monitor or a scope or whatever you want, there'd be nothing there. It'll have cancelled it out. So that's that's the idea of it. It's seriously good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you found the cable. Yeah, I found the cable. Yeah, that's the one. Star Quad. That is the stuff. It's still the same. It hasn't increased in price. I haven't bought it now in about uh I haven't bought it in well over a year or maybe a year and a half. And I think it was around that price the last time I looked at it. So very good value. Little bit fiddly to work with, but it's got um it's got twine in it as well, you see. It's got like three um three strands of twine in it. The idea is it, it won't let the cable stretch on a long run uh, which is very good like if it's there the, this stuff is designed to be you know ran in around the back of very high power pas and stuff like that where there's quite a lot of heat 
So uh, if if, if uh, you had a cable that didn't have this twine in it, it would stretch. If you had a 10, 10 foot cable running through the back of a, a, a 50k rig um, for a couple of hours uh, at a concert or something like that, it would be probably about uh, 10 foot six at the end of the concert. It would actually stretch six inches with the heat. So um, you don't want it stretching because, of course, as the cable stretches, the diameter diminishes. So its qualities change. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Um, you know, so can't say it enough. Uh, uh, another thing as well, grounding, not uh, in terms of station grounding, but in terms of grounding all your audio equipment. Anything that you have in your audio chain, ground it. And, um, you know, as a lot of people, look, everybody here knows it. Ground it to, you know, star pattern all to the one point, wherever you have everything else in the station, ground it to the amount of people I see with, with stuff grounded in their shacks and it's daisy chained. Right, so this goes to this, goes to this, goes to this, and then you have ground loop, ground loop, ground loop, ground loop. So you don't want to be doing that at all. You want everything grounded to the one point. So uh, once you've that done, as Del Boy used to say, it'd be cushy. <laughs> yeah, I remember that morning well where I got up and I said I was going to improve my audio. Life has never been the same since. <laughs> what about what about your uh, your interface boxes, um, George? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I've made about I've made about thirty of them now at this stage. Um, I made a an interface box that plugs into the. You know, on the back of the 7300, there's very little there in terms of, uh, you know, RCA connectors or 3.5 mil connectors, you know. So uh, the accessory plug is where you get into everything on, on one of those. And it seems a lot of the newer icons as well. Um, so I made a little box. Um, you plug it into the, into the ACC port so you can have... Uh, you can inject audio into the back of the radio. You have PTT for a foot switch. Uh, you have AF out at fixed level for the likes of uh, if you're using um, some one of the CW software packages and you can just, you're just feeding the audio into your computer at, at, at line level. Um, so even if you turn the radio down uh, using the volume control, the, the computer is still hearing it. So uh, then you have, uh, there's what, there's a 12, a 13.8 uh, volt outlet at it there, but it's it's only rated at an amp. So say for the likes of a light on an SWR meter or something like that. Um, you have band data. If you have one of these fancy amplifiers that can follow the radio, uh, that's done with voltage. The, the, the radio tells the amplifier uh, say starting on 160 meters, it's a volt, 80 meters, two volts, 40, three volts, da, 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 the whole way through the band stack and register. And um, so you would just plug your little RCA into the box, then plug it into the band port on the back of the amp, and then the amp will track with the radio. And uh, that's pretty much that. So I made quite a few of them. And um, People, uh, people were on asking me about them, so I started making them for them. And then I, I made a different one where I have a really old uh, amplifier here. It's a Drake L7. It's it's almost as old as me. I think I was three when it was made. And the problem I had with that um, was the, the previous radio I had was a, an FT920 and I just plugged the PTT line into the back of the radio and it keyed it for a decade. There was no problems. And I discovered then when I got the uh, 7300 that uh, the maximum voltage that you can put on the PTT line or the PTT socket on the back of the radio is 14 volts. Any more than that, it'll fry the relay. So I measured the uh, 
I measured the voltage on the PTT light of the L7 and it was, um, I think it was 38 volts DC, something like that. I can't remember exactly now, but it was fairly high. So what I done then was I made a new version of the box with all the same um, outputs and inputs on it. And I put in a solid state uh, interface or a solid state relay in there, uh, a DC DC solid, solid state relay. So the same story, the PTT line and the radio, it's isolated and how the, how the uh, relay works is it, it's got two LEDs on the, in the middle of it, I have a relay, sorry, you have an LED and you have a photo cell. And when I step on the pedal, the LED lights inside in the middle of this solid state relay, the sensor sees it and it fires the relay and that keys the amp. So there's no actual connection. It's just done uh, photo uh, optically. So um, I made a few of them as well, but they're, the relay is dear. The relay is about... Uh, the relay is about 40 quid on its own. So um, I didn't make too many of them because like most of the amps now, and um, there's there's only a volt or maybe 1.5 volts on the PTT line. It's just the older dinosaurs don't, you know, there can be like, you even go back even further on some of the heat kit stuff there. You would be common to see voltages of 80 or 100 volts on the PTT line. So uh, that's why they say when you've got the lid off one of them things, uh, one arm behind your back, because uh, it'll fire you across the room fairly quick. If uh, And if you don't have one arm behind your back, <laughs> at least you'll be able to pick yourself up off the ground if you do. But if you have the two hands out in front of you, you'll be probably dead before you hit the ground. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really liked the 7300. I'd say I had one of the first of them in, in, in AI. Um, as soon as they came out, I got one. And I absolutely love it. I was very put off when I got it first. I was very put off at the size of it. It was so small. It looked like, uh, it looked like a CB, you know. And I love CBs before anyone says anything. I spend all my time messing with them. But... Um, I was very put off by this, and a friend, a good friend of mine, uh, Rowley, the uh, EI5KP, he said to me, look, I had one of them here. He said, just get it. He says, don't be worrying about the size of it. He says, absolutely awesome radio. So I got the radio anyway and came home. I had to go to Dublin to get it, came home, plugged it in, and... I went straight to 80 meters and I was tuning around for a few lads I used to talk to fairly regular there. And a few of them I used to struggle with because, you know, they didn't have a great signal or just, you know, the RF gods didn't want to play between me and them. And these handful of guys that I used to struggle with, you know, I'd have, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have the ear right up to the speaker to, to listen to them. I could hear them absolutely no problem on the 7300 and the more I had it and the more I was on the air listening and, and uh, talking to guys that used to be always a poor signal, I could hear them all perfectly and nothing changed in the station on either radio. So um, like I had this 920 for a decade and I thought it was the best thing since the sliced pan. As soon as I got to 7,300, I very quickly just uh, figured out it was deaf as a post. And um, it, it, absolutely amazing radio. But when you hook it up to a computer, it, it's just a whole different ball again. Um, I can have it there. I have it set up. It'll do everything. It does FT8. Tried it once for 10 minutes and got bored. Um, Rate E. Um, I can have it. It'll, I can have it. With one software package, it can read CW fairly well, and I can type on the keyboard. And as I'm typing on the keyboard in real time, the radio will be sending what I'm typing as CW. Um, so, you know, I'm not too bad at Mars, but I'm not as good at it as my PC is. My PC is awesome. Uh, it can read it at 80 words a minute, no problem. But, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, and you get it all figured and sorted out. I can remote in if I want from my phone. 
and I can fire up the radio no matter where I am. And I can, using my phone and my hand, I can actually talk into my phone and transmit from my radio here in the house. It's crazy technology, like when you think about it. Someone said that to you 20 years ago, you'd say, this fella needs one of them special white coats. Lock him up. But uh, it's amazing all the stuff you can do now. The internet has made the world very, very small. And um, it's good. It's good in a lot of ways and it's bad in a lot of ways. But um, I, I think that the advantages it's brought to us in our everyday lives is, uh, is, is, is very, very good, you know. Like you don't have to carry cash around with you know, or you don't have to, you know. So if someone, you know, someone mugs you or whatever, you know, they, like they're not going to get any money out of you. So there's not really, if they can't get any money out of you, there's not much point in mugging you. So, um, you know, it's good. It's good. So I, I've kind of run out of stuff to say now, unless anybody else wants to ask me something else and I'll wind myself up again for another 20 minutes. Uh, going back to uh, your remark on uh, early on about uh, headphones, mm. um, I always operate, always have done with headphones. Mm. But what would you recommend as uh, being good quality but not costing a, an arm and a leg uh, as a pair of headphones? Yeah, you've uh, hit me out there, Peter, again. I think you finished up. But um, I would recommend... You want to spend somewhere in the region of at least hundred pounds. Uh, anything from Sennheiser. Uh, Sennheiser make extremely, extremely good headphones. And something I discovered as well um, uh, uh, down through the years. You know the little earbuds that you get with your phone. You know the ones that come in the box with your phone. Uh, the chip, little tiny guys. They're actually very good on the radio. Um, I often had them plugged into the 7300 there now. Just, you know, and I'd be doing something else and I'd be listening. Uh, they're quite good. But any any headphones in the 100 quid range that Sennheiser make, go for it. I even have a pair of Sennheisers out in the shed there. They're bargain basement. I forget what ones they are, but they're very cheap. They're about 25 quid on Amazon. And they're actually quite good. Uh, on the radio the only thing i don't like about them is they're not noise cancelling so if somebody comes into the shack which there's quite a lot of traffic through my shack and dogs going mad and stuff like that um so you know if they come in or something that's happening in the background you know you're quite aware of it whereas which the hd 380s i have you know i could be sitting over there listening to the radio and my wife is sitting where i am now this is her side and this like she's six foot away from me and she will call and call and call. I can't hear her. She has to put before I actually realize she's looking for me. I can't hear her. Some would say that's a that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for the advice Sarah. Yeah. I'm a bit of a brand snob when it comes to, to, to certain things, but the reason I'm a brand, a brand snob with them is because I've tried a lot of other things down through the years, and, and I know that, yes, I paid a lot of money for these, but the result I got from the money I spent is, you know, is very, very good. So I don't mind spending money on anything once it does what it's supposed to do and does it well. Uh, there's nothing more annoying than buying something that's a good few quid and you plug it in and you go, oh, I thought it'd be a bit better than that. You know, we've all had it down through the years with cars and radios and, uh, you know, everything in life. You know, there's things you buy and you spend the money on them and you bring them home and you, you end up being disappointed with them. So... That's kind of that. That's why I am the way I am with Sennheiser headphones, the Van Damme cable, the Behringer stuff, because it works and it works well. It does it like the Behringer stuff. Um, if you were to look at it from the point of view, uh, say if you were into music, 
uh, which is what it's designed for. Um, you know, and you had a studio and you go on to some of the, the forums or the internet groups that deal with studio equipment. And if you said you had a Behringer 2200 preamp, they'd all start laughing at you, you know. Uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's a door wedge. Keep the door open when it's windy. But for, for amateur radio, it's overkill. It's very well made. It's very well shielded. Like some of the Behringer stuff here, I'm just looking at it up in the rack there now. It's there. Oh, it must be five or six years here now. I've never had a problem with it. Put it up, plugged it in. Job done. Never went near it since. You know, so I don't mind that. Does exactly what it says in the tin, as they say in Ron Seal. <laughs> There is so, a case, isn't there? You you get what you pay for. Yes and no. You know, sometimes you, I know guys that have bought stuff, uh, Bellari preamps and Bellari tube, uh, tube uh, parametric EQs, and they're very expensive pieces. Like, you know, Bellari tube EQ, you could pay £500 for them. And that's probably a 40-year-old piece of equipment at this stage. Uh, or an Optimod. Uh, I was only listening to, um, what's his name up in, um, oh, that HB9. I often talk to him. I can never remember his call sign. He used to work for uh, Radio Canada International or something like that. And he has a little Icom 735 and he has an Orban Optimod plugged into it that he got out of some shortwave station he worked in. You want to hear this thing. My God. He has... An ICOM 735, Orban Optimod, and he has uh, one of the Electro Voice RE20s. Sounds like God himself. Absolutely amazing. You know, and there's nothing elaborate there. Like, a thousand quid would probably buy you the whole lot. So, you know, uh, I think a lot of it is, is not so much how much something costs. It's, it's knowing what to do with it when you have it. Again, back to reading the manual. Very important. I used to read the books of all the stuff as I bought. Just read them over and over again. And every time you read it, you pick something else out of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I must try that now. And then you, you try that and yeah, oh God, that makes a fairly good difference. Or it might work at all. But that's a lot of it, you know. I, I don't know. It, it can become it can become very obsessive. You're chasing... You see, I set myself a huge challenge. Um, if you go to 80 there on a Sunday evening, there's a few boys on there that rent audio and... You sit back and you look at them on the scope. They're 4K, 5K, 6K. In the case of one guy, he's 8K wide. Okay. Now, if the band is not busy, big deal. Who cares? Not bothering anybody. Um, I set myself the challenge of sounding hi-fi on 3K. For the reason being that 90% of the people listening to you that's the width they're listening at, right? So if you're if you're AK wide and you have all your audio gear configured to work at that bandwidth and someone, you know, say Pete or MLO is sitting there and he's listening on his 7300 at 3K, all that fidelity, you're not hearing it because the radio is rolling it off at either end. So you're only getting the, the bit in the middle. So you want to... It's that 3K is is like that came from the telecommunications industry that was kind of standardized as the optimum bandwidth for, for voice phone and yada yada and stuff like that. So it kind of carried over into the radio world once SSB became a thing in the 60s. And I said to myself, right, I'm going to do this and sound as good as I can on 3K. So therefore, everyone that hears me, 90% of them is hearing 
what I have going on. So I'm not spending thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds, but there's only that 10% that are listening at AKY that can hear it. So that's like a lot of these guys that are big into audio, they use the SDRs like Hack Green and, and um, the one in Derby and all that. They listen on those and they're listening at maybe 15, 20 K wide because you, that's how wide you can listen on a web-based SDR. I think you can go to 25 K. Um, so like it, it's easy to sound good at seven, eight, 10 K wide. It's easy when you have all that room to get all that fidelity out. It's very easy to sound good, but a 3k, not so much. It's an awful lot harder. But that's, I like challenges. So I, I did it in the end. Um, I have a video here somewhere. I'll find this now. Ah, be quiet, Joe. drop that in the in the link in the box there that's actual over the air audio recorded at my friend uh roly ei 5kp on a flat receiver at 3k and that's the actual audio file that he he emailed it to me so that's what everything i have sounds like over the air so um i just had to drop that in there that's what's possible if you're prepared to drive yourself crazy slowly but uh, it's it's fun you know so uh, I have a YouTube channel for those of you that don't know um, there's lots of varied content there it could be anything from messing about with audio stuff out in the shed messing around with old CB radios restoring them and uh, things like that or out in the driveway lying under the car getting very angry with it and um uh, calling it names um i have a I have a bmw out in the driveway there we have it 11 years and uh it's never failed uh, it's mot yet and there's two hundred and fifty thousand miles on it now but um you know that's i make videos on the things that interest me and the things i like to do so i kind of the way i look at it is when i'm dead and gone whoever's left here behind me will always be able to see the kind of things that we used to get up to, you know, I just think it's, it's kind of like a, a life blog, I guess. And a uh, bit of fun doing it as well. So I enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, that's it, lads. That's all I have to say. Well, I'm certainly going to have a look at the uh, YouTube channel later. So that's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, George. Uh, no are, there, are there any questions for anyone else finally before... George um, goes and makes himself a cup of tea or something. I don't drink tea, believe it or not. Water. <laughs> I, I don't drink alcohol either. I'm a reject paddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, guys? No. If, if anybody is ever messing about with anything and, and you need a bit of a helping hand or whatever, just feel free anytime, drop me an email, ei7, uh, george, ei7ko at gmail.com. Uh, my email address is good on my QRZ, so if anybody has any queries or anything they want uh, a bit of help with, 